This is Alvar 1B, section 10.2 on multiplying radicals. And the first thing is, what do we do when we're trying to multiply these radicals? Notice there is a time sign here, or if there's no sign in between it, then it's implied that you're going to multiply. It's not a plus, it's not a minus. So unlike when we were adding and subtracting where we needed the radicals to be the same, very often and um, almost always these numbers, the B and the D are going to be different from each other. But the way we multiply these radicals, I think is kind of a common sense thing. You multiply the outsides, A times C, and then you multiply the insides and those stay inside. So if you multiplied something like this, you would multiply the outside numbers to get AC, multiply the inside numbers, the numbers underneath the radical to get the square root of BD. So that's the general idea of how you're going to multiply the radicals. We'll do a few examples in this part one. Um, there's a couple of ways you could do these because these numbers aren't too big. I'm just going to straight up multiply outside of the square roots. There aren't anything, but inside square root of two times square root of eight is square root of 16. I just multiply them. And then I know that the square root of 16 is a plain old regular four. So this one comes out to four. In number two, once again, we're going to multiply the outsides five times negative three is negative 15 multiply your insides six times 12 is 72. Now this problem isn't done yet though because I need to simplify it as much as I can and the square root of 72 will break down. So off to the side, can you try to break down square root of 72 all the way? And like I've said on previous videos, pause the video, try to do it on your own. And when you're ready, come back and see how it works out. There's a few perfect squares that go into this. Four goes into 72, nine goes into 72, but four times nine or 36 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 72. So this is going to become a six square root of two. And then there was a negative 15 on the outside. So negative 15 times six square root of two, multiply these outside numbers to get a negative 90 square root of two. And again, you can only multiply the parts that are in the same location. Multiply these numbers to get the 90. The square root of 2 stays square root of 2. Number 3. There's nothing outside, which is great. On the inside, you have 18 times 6. And I'm just writing it as 18 times 6 because I don't necessarily know what it is. And I'll get back to that in a second. x times x to the third is x to the fourth. Um, we have a y squared, z to the fourth times z to the first is z to the fifth. So now we have all these parts. And again, I'll go to the very beginning of this, the 18 times 6. Maybe I don't know what that is. Um, with a calculator, I could figure out that big number. But here's my strategy. 18 times 6 is underneath the square root sign. What I could do is break up the 18 into 3 and 6. The reason why I chose that is because I have a pair of sixes right now. This is square root of oops, a little smaller. Square root of three from this part. And then the square root of six times six is the square root of thirty-six. I can just multiply them because they're both under there. And then square root of thirty-six is plain old six, right? Take the square root of it, we get a six. And then that square root of three will go underneath the radical sign by itself. Now, if I'd actually multiplied 18 times six, I believe that's 108. It's 36 times three. The square root of 36 is the six from down here. And then that square root of three would stay on the inside. So as far as all these parts go, I see that there is a six on the outside and a three on the inside. If you call back to the previous chapter, when you are taking square roots of these variables, you always divide them by two. Like square rooting something is dividing these exponents by two. Four divided by two is two. So we have an X squared on the outside. Two divided by two is one. So we have Y to the one on the outside. And then Z to the fifth. Five divided by two is 2.5. So we're going to have Z squared from the two. And then because of the 0.5, there's still a Z on the inside make my answer look a little better. Um, so it's 6x to the second 
y to the first z to the second times the square root of 3z. So that is just multiplying our radicals. Number four, numbers four, five, and six, actually, all deal with distributing. So the square root of two has to multiply to this. That's going to be five square root of four minus, then it's also going to multiply to this square root of three, which makes that square root of six. Right, so this square root of two multiplied to give us this. It also multiplied to give us this one. I can't combine these together unless the numbers underneath the radical are the same. The good news about this first one, though, is that the square root of four is two multiplied by the five in front of it would give us a 10. So this yellow part is a 10 then minus the square root of six, which is after it. They cannot be combined. They can't be simplified any more than that. That would be our simplified best answer for number four. Number five, distribute six times the square root of nine minus, distribute to here, square root of three times square root of two is square root of six. I know that the square root of nine is three, so it's six times three, right? Take the square root of it. Six times three is 18. And then minus the square root of six, we can't combine those any more than what they look like right there. Number six, we have more multiplying to do in this one. So think about how we did these before when we'd have a variable like an X inside of those, we would draw in all those arrows, We'd multiply all the things out and then combine what we could. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this one. Six times six is 36. Six times the square root of two is plus six root two. Multiply these insides. Negative root two times six is negative six root two. And I know the square root of two is listed first, but the square root of two has to go underneath. The six would go out front. And then at the very end of all this, we have negative times positive, so minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. All right, next step. Positive 6 root 2, negative 6 root 2. Well, those are just going to cancel each other out. 36 is 36. But then the square root of 4 is 2, right? It's a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. Then 36 minus 2, they're both regular numbers. Just subtract them, and we get a 34. Two more examples here. And these are a lot like the one we just did. It's not written out like this, but I'm going to write it in that way. 7 minus the square root of 3 squared means you're taking 7 minus the square root of 3 times 7 minus the square root of 3. Make sure you write it that way actually write out what it is, write out what that squared means, because that's going to be the key to multiplying this thing correctly. 7 times 7, that's a 49. 7 times negative square root of 3 is negative 7 square root of 3. Multiply your insides. Negative square root of 3 times 7 is also negative 7 square root of 3. It's the same thing. And then our last terms, negative square root of 3 times negative square root of 3. Well, negative times negative is positive. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. As far as simplifying goes, 49. This time, our middle terms are not opposites of each other. They're both negative. So negative 7 square root of 3 minus 7 square root of 3 is minus 14 square root of 3. And the square root of 9 is 3, so the square root of 9 is 3, and there's a plus sign in front of it. So for our final answer, we can combine these plain old numbers. 49 plus 3 is just a 52, and it's minus 14 square root of 3. Last one on this video is number 8. And again, pause the video. Can you write out what it looks like? Think about what we did on the last one. Can you write out what it means? Can you multiply? Can you simplify and then totally simplify? 
So pause it, see what you can do, then come back to the video to see if you did it correctly. All right, let's see. One times one is one. One times the square root of five is one square root of five. Square root of five times one is one square root of five. And square root of five times square root of five is square root of 25. Simplifying this out, one plus, and here's our skill from yesterday, adding like terms, one square root of five plus one square root of five is two square root of five. And then at the very end, the square root of 25, well, I know what that square root is. It's just a plain old regular five. To the answer then, one plus five is six. It's bad six. Six plus two square root of five. And there it is.